Martin Luther King Jr., Cesar Chavez, Nelson Mandela, leaders synonymous with civil rights movements around the world. In the 1970s, Judy Heumann, Ed Roberts, and other activists started a movement that swept the country. No longer willing to accept the status quo, they fought the United States government for the rights of people with disabilities and won. In her memoir, Judy Heumann, the only daughter of German Jewish immigrants, recounts life growing up in Brooklyn, the monumental 504 sit-in at the San Francisco Federal Building, and her illustrious disability activism career, affecting change around the world. Welcome to Behind the Book with 360 with Judy Heumann and our co-author, Kristen Joyner. Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Behind the Book with Ability360, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Casey Kaler, and I am joined here by a few of my colleagues from Ability360. Today, we will be talking with Judy Human and Kristen Joyner about activism in the disability community. Can I point, make an observation about Judy's life as an activist? Um, is that it's not glamorous, and I have been an activist myself, so pulling from my own experience, but specifically commenting about Judy and, and her incredible achievements in terms of being an activist. It's not glamorous and it's long term and you can feel like you're not going anywhere for a long time. Um, and I think one of the ways that, Judy, and you've said this over and over again, but you sustained yourself was by you were friends with your fellow activists. You were, you were committed, your, your friendships and your relationships with the people who were around you were what kept you going and believing in what you were doing. Um, Judy, we have another question um, from Sochil Rascon. She's a young activist in Phoenix. Hi, Judy. My name is Sochil. I'm from Phoenix. So what advice would you give to young disability rights activists entering their professional and personal or volunteer activist lives? Be knowledgeable. Um, it's really important that you know you can't be flim flam. Sometimes that happens because you're in a situation you don't know, but that's not really flim flam. Be prepared. I think that's one thing that we've always found is really important is to be prepared, be able to tell stories, know your story, know the stories of other people, be able to think clearly about what it is that you're wanting or working with other people to kind of define what you see as the problem and what you see as the solutions. Understand that, I mean, I'm sure you do, um, that some of the solutions that we're fighting for in the disability community are not ones that are kind of come about quickly so look at issues that are right in front of you that you need to jump on right away, but then really look at the major issues that you're striving to achieve. Uh, I think as a rule, you wanna do it in community. And as a rule, we don't wanna do it just by ourselves. Sort of the final, my big, realiz <laughs> my big realization, this is gonna sound funny because um, we should know this, but I, for somehow I, with all the schoolhouse rock, with all these sort of like little, I didn't get really educated about government growing up in terms of, I got edu educated about the mechanisms of government and the structure, the house, the Congress, the, what, how votes, how a bill is passed. But I never really understood until I wrote with Judy about her story. I never really understood that government is the only vehicle that we have that's all about harnessing the power of the collective. It's the, the power of what? Of the collective. Of the collective. You can it's another you thing when we talk about her terminology. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use this terminology. It's the only anyway. it's the only vehicle we have where the powerless can come together, like the disability rights, like Judy and the disability rights. We never are. felt ourselves as powerless. Well, right, but but in a certain yeah, right. way, you're structurally powerless in that in, in society at that time, and you came together, and it's the only vehicle that allows every the collective to come together to change something that represents every single person's voice. Philanthropy doesn't do that. 
No good, you know, no social enterprise does that. No business does that. Government is our only vehicle that represents that. And so that I think it's the most important, a democratic, a democratic government. It's the most important vehicle. So I think all of this to say that um, whether you have a disability or not, if you believe that something that's going on is unjust, it's really important, I think, to try at the moment to address it. Sometimes you can't, sometimes it's not the right place, but um, I, I really believe that part of why I've been able to do things that I have is in part as I somewhat jokingly say is because I'm from Brooklyn. But the other part really is having friends with disabilities where we talked about the commonality of the kinds of problems we all face that you know in your head, even if you're there by yourself, that you do have the support of other disabled people and that none of us are doing these things just for ourselves, but it really is for the benefit of others. And I think that for me is always a driving force to um, like deal with it. Don't lose. <laughs>